William Desmond Taylor came to Hollywood to become a big actor and director, which he eventually accomplished. 20 years after immigrating to America, however, he would be dead in his downtown LA apartment. This week on Death and Entertainment. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder, injury, and death. Oh my God! Shocking new details that have stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. Ah! What do you call this thing anyway? Death in entertainment. And hello. And here we are in February. Deados of February. Yeah, it's for lovers, for Join dead us. lovers. Yeah. <laughs> you are all our lovers. Yes. yes. Sick <laughs> bastards. <laughs> and I am Kyle Plouffe. And I am Mark Volkerin. And I'm Alejandro Dowling. And we are talking about the first ever Hollywood Who Done It, huh? First ever documented Hollywood Who Done It. Wow. This is what this is what uh it was all built on. Ooh. You know, there would be no LA confidential if it wasn't for this case. There would be no Who's the right or James Elroy? If it wasn't for this case, there'd be no I don't know I Raymond read, Chandler. Raymond Chandler. If there wasn't for this case, hey. so this, this is like the um, this is like the Beatles. This is the foundation? <laughs> yeah, this is the foundation. <laughs> this, this is, is the Brian Jones. The Brian Jones. Pre Fatty. Pre Fatty uh, Arbuckle. Wow, well, he comes into this too. No way. He's, really? he's tangled all up in this one. Ooh, future Ooh. episode. Future episode. This might be a companion to a Fatty Arbuckle that's gonna come. Down the pike at some point. Yeah. Death and entertainment. Wow. So, I am excited. On the die highway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we are traveling down the die highway to February 2nd, 1922. Let's go. 2-2-2-2. That is pretty creepy. It's February and it is 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not much in the way of music going on at this time. Not much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you had to like send music by Pony Express, so it really <laughs> took a while to get the charts to like catch up with what was going on. Yes. But what is going on in the music at this time? Number one. Yeah. Al Jolson, April Showers. Mammy. <laughs> is that how it goes? Yeah. I thought you were just no. making that up. Oh, <laughs> That's very close, <laughs> yeah. actually. Really? It's my mammy likes it when it rains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very bad quality always. All those songs were just like all the same shit. They all sounded, they were like Rage Against the Machine of their time. All the songs sounded exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a comparison. Thank you. That is a very good comparison. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> I have a bit of trivia for this song, actually. Okay. That you might not believe. While performing this song in the studio, Al Jolson was in blackface. Yeah, oh, I believe okay. it. <laughs> he said, "Turn me up in the headphones." Yeah. <laughs> I can't hear my snare. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all I got here. Yeah, that's all we. Ha that's all the info we have. A lot of missed info from back then. I'll, um, I'll talk about it later. But a lot of the movies of this director are just totally lost to everyone in humanity. But speaking of movies, what is the top three right now? Oh, uh, movies at this time. Uh, number one, Robin Hood. Robin Hood was a 1922 silent adventure film starring Douglas Fairbanks and Wallace Beery. It was the first motion picture ever to have a Hollywood premiere. Wow, so we got a few firsts a for Hollywood firsts here. going on here, yeah. Yeah, it was at Grauman's Egyptian Theater. This is when the time when Hollywood started becoming like a normal place where business was done. Yeah. And not some wacky, insane kind of Sodom and Gomorrah place, which is, this was all captured in that movie Babylon. Crazy, horrible movie. I had to go see it with, with my crazy mother in Boston <laughs> when I was home for the holidays. So you don't have to. It's, yeah. It covers, uh, Brad Pitt's supposed to be Douglas Fairbanks, kind of. And so it kind of covers a lot of this time from the switch over from weird kind of ragtag uh, silent movies to the talkies. Ah. And I'm not just saying this because he did a Robin Hood movie, but Douglas Fairbanks would have been like the Kevin Costner of the 80s. Yeah, and that Costner... Robin Hood movie sucks. Yeah. I watched that again uh, <laughs> last week, but I'm not trying to shit on your uh, theory there. Yeah, but this yeah. was like his water world then. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. But this made actually a lot of money. I, yeah. This is like the, it's like the Al Jolson song. It's like the only movie that was out, too. <laughs> that poses an interesting question, though. Yeah. Are there any good Robin Hood adaptations? Men it's in Tights? Yes. Yeah, Men in yeah. Tights is the only good Very one. Very funny. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. What's That's number two? <laughs> <laughs> we solved that issue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Blood and Sand. 
We have no info. No info. <laughs> yeah. It's been lost to the uh, Matrix. Blood and sand. Sounds yeah. like a horror movie. Sounds serious. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number three. This is the title of a movie I love that was, uh, you know, somewhat recent. This is Grandma's Boy from 1922. It's a family comedy film starring Harold Lloyd. <laughs> that's my Sandler. Yeah, that's your Harold I assume, Lloyd. I assume he had his uh, fingerprints on this <laughs> one, too. Yeah, uh, Not a hit in theaters, but big hit on DVD in the, the college the, circuit. The contemporary. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Not this one. This one was big on... Uh, uh, Microfiche. Nice. Uh, the film. <laughs> the, <laughs> the film. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was highly influential, helping to pioneer feature length comedies combined uh, with combined gags and character development. So the film was such an immensely popular movie, uh, commercially successful. Um, it was, you know, one of the biggest commercially successful films in its time. All so, right. Yeah. Interesting. So so might have yeah. to see that one. Without yeah. this, we would have never had uh, Leslie Nielsen, it sounds like. So, yeah. thank you, Grandma. Or Adam Boy. Sandler. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. Happy <laughs> Madison. <laughs> <laughs> I just sound like a monkey or something. Yeah. <laughs> the origins of Happy Madison right here. Yeah, yeah right here. Nice. You're hearing it. Um, them our, to blame. With that said, let's dive right into it, guys. Let's do what do you say? Okay, William Desmond Taylor was born uh, William Cunningham Dean Tanner. Wow. So he had a, he had a different name when he was born. Um, one of five children, his mom was from Ireland and his dad was a British Army military general. Ooh. Sounds like kind of a traitor, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Someone in that family is a traitor to something. Yeah. I think Yankees Red Sox going on there. Uh, William grew up in like very high society. Like he grew up like very well titled and whatever that is hoity toity uh, but in ireland but they were in like i think it was like a, a military uh base or something in ireland when it was like occupied territory before the easter rising and you know the the wars and stuff in ireland they kind of took their own uh country back so um the history lesson yes yeah. well, for you guys. Um, go Ireland. Um, <laughs> from 1885 to 1887, he attended Marlborough College in England, where he started doing a little Shakespeare acting. Ooh. Yeah. So born in Ireland, but he went to, uh, I think Marlborough, it's not the Marlborough I know from Massachusetts. Yeah, Marlborough, Mass. Yeah, that, any Mar if there was a college in Marlborough, it's bad. It's not <laughs> where you send your Marlborough points. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you, that's, that's how you pay for it, yeah. with Marlborough points. Um, so this was in Ireland. No, this is in England, where oh, Marlborough England. College was. Well, yeah. yeah. So he was sent over to Marlborough College in order to, gotcha. from Ireland, to go to uh, college here. And which, act. And, well, he wasn't supposed to act. His dad didn't like it. Ooh. His dad was like a war guy. He was like an army dude. So, so like he wasn't on board with any of these ideas. And in Shakespearean acting, they never allowed women to play women roles. I wonder if his dad showed up and he's like, dressed as a woman, and he's like, no son of mine! Well, that <laughs> happened, actually. Oh, shit. He, he was... <laughs> exactly what you just described. Yeah. <laughs> Unbeknownst to his dad, he started acting, and it, they actually, it was like a touring company, and they came down to London to, uh, to do it there. And some of the family friends actually saw him in the audience uh, uh, dressed as a woman character. Oh, my the God. Dad? No, no, not no. the dad. <laughs> What's that? I thought maybe it was like Marvin Gaye. <laughs> the dad showed up and dragged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like gay senior. Like they caught each other both, you know. Yeah. You don't tell if I don't tell. Yeah. Okay, so he would Mutually go. Mutually assured destruction. He would go see plays dressed as a woman to hide. No, no. Oh. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you explain this. He was an actor, and he would do, uh, there were traveling Shakespearean uh, productions that he mm -hmm. would travel with after going to, to uh, Marlboro College. So one of these traveling acting things that William went to, they took them to London. And he had never like gone to like a major metropolitan area to do acting. And he went to London, and some of his family's friends saw him while he was acting, acting as a female. Okay, gotcha. Does that make yeah. sense? It does now, yes. Okay. So he got caught, um, and in his his dad like didn't know what to do with, about it. He didn't want him acting. He sent him to a um, after college. He sent him to a dude ranch in Kansas, America. <laughs> I think there was like a family friend that because uh, that's when the Irish started really flooding into America around that time. Yeah. So his dad probably was like, I'm, "You're going to learn to do a trade." And Williams like, "Can I go to America?" 
And then his dad's like, okay, if you're going to go there, you're going to go to our, you know, family friend's farm in Kansas. Hanging out with dudes. Yeah. yeah. Dude, like, <laughs> I'm going to man you up, boy. Yeah. Send you to Kansas dude ranch. <laughs> Are you picking up a theme here? Maybe the dad thought his son might be something that yes. was not good around that time, was yeah. probably gay. And then he was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this out of you by making you work yourself to death in Kansas. Yeah. What, because he was dressed as a woman? Uh, yes. Hanging out with chorus boys? That might have been it. Which yeah. not, in these days and age, you know, nothing wrong with that. But at that this time, it was like a restable offense in England, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And like entertainment at this time, as we're seeing, like uh, Hollywood isn't even really a thing yet. It's not like this huge industry where people are like clamoring to get in. Like coming from a military background, his dad's like, ugh, all these guys are just like playing pretend with each other. Like what the hell is going and there, on? There's no... Uh, living to be made from yeah. any of this. It's just like you're like a, you know, Shakespeare's the only one still making money. He's not alive, obviously, but yeah. like, but yeah, there's no money to be made. If you're a producer of plays, that's one thing. Yeah. But as one of the, you know, paid actors, you're you're making scraps. Mm. Yeah, I can see how it would be like a pretty shameful thing for like someone from high society to be like, what are you, what, what are you doing? I know, yeah. It's such a waste of time. Yeah, <laughs> and it's embarrassing to us. Yeah. Because, you know, his dad's like a war general. Uh, He's you know, killed people in the middle. It, it, yeah, the sun <laughs> prancing around doing Shakespeare yeah. in the park. <laughs> Picture the IRA at this time, like catching yeah. wind of this. They would have fucking make hay out of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so while well, he, he's saying hey, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for interrupting me. For that. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, he is. Um, so he does say hey for a while at this dude ranch in Kansas. Yes, until. Um, the the owner actually passes away, mm. so the the ranch closes down and he starts traveling. He's like he's like going on walkabout, just traveling America. He goes up to Alaska and like starts working on gold mines up there because there was like a big gold rush around the eight, late eighteen hundreds. It's a Kerouac novel. I know. Yeah, he's just <laughs> like yeah, he's got like a stick and bindle, yeah. and he's just kind of <laughs> running around the country, going all the way up to Alaska. That's a great time to be gold mining. I yeah. That's when you could. Get some real gold. Yeah. Well, I, I was Isn't it real it? though? I, I feel like it was like it was like crypto of its time. You know, the first <laughs> couple of people that got into it made off like bandits, but a lot of people got ripped off. Yeah, then, he got FTX. Yeah, he got <laughs> FTX. <laughs> Sam Bankman freed. Yeah. Um, when his sister passes away back in Ireland, he gets like a huge inheritance, which helps him set him up in New York. Um, you know, those rent prices in New York, yeah. forget about it. <laughs> um, there he meets another actor named Ethel May Hamilton, um, an actress uh, who had appeared in the stage musical Flo- Floridora under the name Ethel May Harrison. Um, her dad actually came from a ton of money, which actually... Really so nothing's changed in the entertainment industry, is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone who gets an apartment in New York has some sort of Their inheritance daddy, that's doing yeah, really well. Pretty much, yeah. 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 I like yeah how he at, comes from money, too. He's yeah. got like, this big inheritance. Yeah, after he struck gold, too. Yeah, he, he literally struck gold. <laughs> <laughs> now he gets an inheritance. Yeah. And I like how Ethel made Hamilton. She's like... I need a better stage name. Yeah. How about Harrison? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. Was it like a Screen Actors Guild thing? Was there already a Hamilton in there, yeah. and that's why she had oh, to change it? Oh, there could have been an Ethel May Hamilton. Could have been. Already on Broadway. Yeah, that's why Paul Thomas Anderson had to go by the three names thing, because yeah. there was a Paul Anderson already. And what's he doing now? Dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, this kind of set them... They live like right on Fifth Avenue, and they were like... They were like high society people in New York. Mm. Um, the couple married on December 7th, 1901. Uh, they had a daughter, Ethel Daisy, born in 1902 or 1903. There's there's no confirmation on this. So. Yeah. <laughs> Close uh, enough. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty, they become pretty well known around New York. Um, William got into the Manhattan nightlife a little too Ooh. hardcore. Doing poppers at the clubs. Yeah. He would <laughs> drink heavily and cheat on his wife all the time. With who? Exactly. Girl guy. I think he swung both ways. Hey. That's Door. what you implied. Door that mean. swings both ways swings most often. Really? That's what they say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Kyle says. <laughs> We'll let that go without any challenges at all or any follow-up questions of what Kyle's talking about. So this is kind of a Joel Grey situation where he's in the theater world, got a wife, a kind of 
doing some of the stage hands. He's got side piece DL. guys, side piece girls. He's got everything going on. And is this the Roaring Twenties at this, this point? This is the Roaring ni- early 1900s. So it's like 1908. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. He he's before the Roaring. This is like the aughts of 1900s. Yeah. He's already roaring. Yeah. <laughs> well, he also strangely enough had crippling depression and like couldn't get out of bed some days, and like because he's fucking. Maybe <laughs> I I think he's just a guy that gets guilt. He gets guilt and he gets very tired of situations very quickly. Yeah. I think he um he doesn't realize like he's he's going to like get bored with all of these things that he has. He has more th- he's just showed up to fucking America. He's rich, he's acting, he's married his actress wife and he has a daughter and he feels very unfulfilled and he's depressed. Yeah. You know what I came to California with? What? I certainly didn't struck gold. What <laughs> would you come with? Of, of nothing. Chevy, yeah, nothing, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely nothing. With a Dell computer, um, and he's got the world at his fingertips. Yeah, yeah. he's got the world on his fingertips. It sounds like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Where's he putting his fingertips? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on October twenty third, nineteen oh eight, William just disappears. Whoa! No one knows where the hell he goes. He's just gone. Um, yeah. Uh, s- some family and friends say maybe he had he suffered a mental lapse. Um. And maybe he just wandered off or he had amnesia or something. But he's just, uh, he's never uh, heard from in New York again. Whoa. Yeah. Um, Little is known of the years immediately following his disappearance. Uh, He allegedly travels through Canada again and Alaska again uh, (laughs) and the northwestern U.S. mining. I think he went back to look for more gold, basically, (laughs) it seems like. So there was a lot of gold. Um, yeah. He he switches from acting to producing. So he does get into producing while he, he makes his way to San Francisco. So he must have walked. All, <laughs> I don't even know if he's walking or how he's yeah. traveling. Because he goes all the way up to Canada, Alaska, back down to San Francisco. By yeah. horse. And he resurfaces around 1912. And by this time, he changes his name to William Desmond Taylor. That that's uh, when his final incarnation of of this person he's is. reached his final form, and he's in <laughs> San Fran. Which come on, like, he's he's home, baby. Yeah, this is Johnny Appleseed all over <laughs> yeah. America, just shooting loads across the <laughs> oh continental. My God. <laughs> yeah, he sucked and fucked his way all the way up to the to, back to the Yukon, down to San Fran. <laughs> he's blowing Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so yeah, some New York acquaintances came out to San Francisco and met up with them. Was like, hey man, are you okay? Um, and he was like broke at this time, and they Oof. gave him some money so he could move down to Los Angeles, which is where he heard like people are starting to make a lot of movies and make a lot of money and stuff. He lost his fortune. Yeah, yeah, he he spent it all. He had nothing left. I, maybe he sent his wife um, and the daughter some money and stuff here and there. That's but, nice of him. But she never hears from him again, really. Well, yeah, you got to think about it. It's like at that time there are banks, but you can't live too far away from the bank because it's physical money. It's not like you have debit cards and stuff. Yeah, you got to take your money with you the whole way you're going. Yeah. So he's just he could have got money. robbed or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anything could have happened. Yeah, there's no Venmo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Let's say he was on a stagecoach across America. Yeah. It was common that the gold would be robbed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if he's just got, you know, a of sack course, of yeah. gold, coins. He probably lost a lot of it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, now he's, uh, he's, he's down in Los Angeles. His wife uh, ad- obtains a state degree of divorce um, since he was deemed missing because she's never talked to him ever again. So she just, in absentia, you can just, like, deem someone missing and get a divorce from them. The rest of her life, she never spoke to him again. Well, she does oh, see him okay. one more time. Oh, and, and wow. I'll, I'll tell you about that. One um, more dramatic encounter. Wow. Um, so William is now down in sunny Los Angeles. He's probably like, he's got a whole new lease on life, I bet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I assume. Yeah, he's, uh, he's down on his knees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, he gets some new, some uh, film roles in silent movies. He becomes a full-time director in 1914, however. Uh-huh. I like in this era of Hollywood, you can just like one weekend just be like, I want to be a director now. Yeah. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. W- well, he, I guess he was an actor. He had it's not ex- that big a leap. It's not like he was a welder. He had some chops. Yeah, he had some background and stuff. And he had some, he had some 
probably some money from friends and stuff to kind of get himself go. I don't know if he he took uh, UCB or anything. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they milked him good. Yeah. That's where he lost his money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he took IO. Yeah. <laughs> and his, his fortune dwindled. <laughs> yeah, after level 401, there's like, there's a special new one we just created <laughs> that requires all the rest of your money. Yeah, he's like, there wasn't a 10B last quarter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, guess what? You're in luck. Because you could keep taking these classes. Oh, man. Um, yeah, they're still trying to save up for the UCB sunset that they build like 100 years from there. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, he realizes he likes being behind the camera a lot better than in front of it. Um, his now ex-wife back in New York actually notices him in one of his movies. Oh. And that's the only way she knows where, she, where he is. Wow. That what a Im- surreal. Imagine that. Like yeah. your husband just you know deserts you and all of a sudden he's in like a George Clooney movie. <laughs> And you're like, you're in a movie theater, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Eating popcorn, just looking to escape. Yeah, and that's the only reason why she knows he's still alive. Um, he quickly becomes a sought-after filmmaker in Hollywood. Um, he went on to make up to 60 films throughout his entire career. That's um, a short amount of time. Yeah, for just a couple of years. 60 I, films. They'd, they'd make a movie in a week then. Yeah. This is like... You know, almost like the golden age of like silent movies. To put it in perspective, in the silent era, that was not uncommon. There would be hundreds of movies being produced. They churned them the fuck out way yeah. faster than you would these days. Yeah. So it sounds like a lot, but it really wasn't that they, much for that time. There was not much production value either. But no, he was considered a, f- a good director, and he went on to work for a place called Famous Players Lasky Studio. It is now called Paramount. Ooh. Yeah, it went on to become that. I like the name change. Yeah, yeah. much better. Famous Players Lasky. That that is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. So they, it was like, yeah, two bad companies combined to make the worst title ever for a company. Egos, yeah. they probably just wanted their that name could have been out it. there. And then Paramount, unforgettable, you know, logo and everything. Yeah. Strong. Um, his directorial debut was The Judge's Wife. Um, and he followed that with a uh, popular 30-episode uh, serial called The Diamond from the Sky. So this, they did like 30 <laughs> sequels to like one bad movie or something. <laughs> There's 30 of his movies right there. <laughs> yeah. He did uh, Davy Crockett, Huckleberry Finn, and Anne of Green Gables. Oh. You're so talking movies now. Movies, Not yeah. people. No, no, no. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, oh, he did her. Anne yeah. of Green Gables. <laughs> and Huck Finn. <laughs> uh, 1918, he has a brief military career. Uh, he jumps. Yeah, he jumps in World War One on the side of the British. Wow! And he was stationed in Dunkirk. Oh my wow. God! Wow! Making Daddy proud right yeah, there. Yeah, during the dying days of World War One. Uh, by 1919, he had reached the rank of major and had served in uh, in I don't know how to pronounce it, Bouge, France. I Bush? Pr- yeah, Bush something, something like that. Maybe Bourgeois. that's it. yeah. <laughs> Bourges. <laughs> It's not like the biggest idiot right now. <laughs> 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 I, r- I wrote it down, and I can't even pronounce it. Paris. Sure. Yeah, yeah it's Paris. <laughs> France. Yeah, it's like when you're on the outskirts of Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm from Boston. And you said towards the tail end of World War One. Yeah. Is it like an Elvis kind of situation where he's not in danger? I d- he, he enlists in the Canadian Expeditionary Force, so he's not like, you know, on the front lines. I think they were just kind of helpers at the end of the World War One to kind of finish. I don't know if they jumped in at the beginning of it. I don't mm. know, I don't know the exact details there, but I don't think he was really in the shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Isn't it amazing in those days up until World War Two yeah. that movie stars would go and join the war effort? Yeah. It yeah. was just so much more common. Yeah, Ted Williams, he was Killing it and for the Red Sox, and then just goes missing. Goes to you know one of the World Wars for four years, then comes back, plays again. Do you think it was it was in like some some hairy situation? Oh, he was for sure. Was yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. He seemed like he was someone that would. Yeah, that's when you know men were men. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. I couldn't these days. I couldn't see Timothy Chalamet jumping in yeah. the rock or anything, you know, <laughs> or jumping down to Afghan or being yeah parachuted into Afghanistan or anything. <laughs> No. Yeah, he'd be he'd be riddled with bullets by the time he <laughs> got to the bottom. <laughs> or Finn Wolfman, whatever his name is, from Stranger Things. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wolfhard. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't see him going overseas. They would invite wars because <laughs> they'd, they'd, we, that they'd seem like that's who we got on our front lines here. But, yeah. And yeah. even Charles Durning, you know him from yeah. Tootsie and a bunch of movies. Yeah. He was a sniper, I believe, really? in the war. 
and he would never talk about the stuff he saw. I think I, wow. I saw that on an old uh, dinner with friends with John Favreau and stuff. Him talking about that stuff. I think Burt Reynolds was getting it out of him, like the real stuff that. Fascinating happened. though. Yeah. Actors of a certain age from that era, they yeah. were very much. John Rickles was in World War Two. What? Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. You never heard of stage act where well, he's, he's like cracking jokes. The whole yeah, time? no, well, well, no. <laughs> he said he was. You he, call that a gun? He, yeah. he, he said he went into the war and he says, "I do jokes. I'm a comedian, entertainer." They're like, you know, the guy stamping all everyone's papers, like, "Okay, yeah, we'll do, we'll do that for." Thanks, <laughs> you know, he's on the front lines of like Okinawa, oh or, my god, or, you know, Japan or something. Wow, <laughs> they, they didn't even care about anything yeah. he said. <laughs> yeah, 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 Hitler, yeah. can't you see I'm busy? Hey, you <laughs> hockey puck, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's trying to stick his way <laughs> to win the war. <laughs> it doesn't really work that way, Don. Um, after the war, Taylor returns to Hollywood and uh, he picked up where he left off, making more hit films, um, which starred the big names of the day, such as Wallace Reed and Mary Pickford. Taylor would enjoy another few years of screen success. Yeah. Until on the morning of February 2nd, 1922, William's body was found inside his bungalow at Alvarado Court in the affluent neighborhood of Westlake, L.A. Oh, wow. Uh, it's now a Ross dress for less <laughs> <laughs> near MacArthur Park. Wow. Which is not a nice neighborhood anymore. No. Yeah. But it's a good Ross. <laughs> <It's> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the worse the neighborhood, the better the Ross. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you need like an irregular uh, T-shirt or something yeah. that it fell off a truck, yeah, yeah. go, yeah, go you there. You can get some wide Nikes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so William was discovered dead lying on his living room floor. At first, it's thought he died of natural causes. Um, Henry Peavy, William's valet, Discovered the body and called the studio, not the police. Wow. They called the studio. They That's what always, they did back in the day. Always. They always do that, don't they? Yeah. They, they have to check in with someone before calling the cops. Well, they, they know where their their money's made. Yeah. And they know, the, and the studios are running this town. It's it's not a really big police force yet in Los Angeles. You yeah. Know? It's just like the security that, that runs the studios really are the police force. That's it's so pretty crazy. sickening, though, when you think about it. Story after story we've covered, yeah, from Elvis to Heath Ledger, yeah, to this one. Uh -huh. The people are just so intimidated that they are afraid to call by authority. Help. Yeah, yeah, they have well, to call like, okay, who's the fixer that can you know make this situation go away? But it, yeah, it's such a small town, though. Yeah, that like if you are perceived to be like a rat or someone who doesn't play by the rules. You're out all over town. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're protecting their livelihood and their resources. No, exactly. Yeah. It's put on them. I'm not blaming the people that are forced into this situation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying it's sick that they have to do that. Yeah. Um, at some point during the morning, a doctor who identified himself as a studio physician for famous players, Lasky, um, and that was his studio, um, he inspected the body and determined the cause of death to be a stomach hemorrhage. Hmm. No one knows who this doctor was. No one, no one talked to him. No one got his, uh, no one got his name. <laughs> no one got, you know, what whether or not he was a real doctor. Yeah, I'm a doctor. See? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the stomach hemorrhage, you see? <laughs> um, I guess this so-called doctor missed the bullet holes in Taylor's back. Oh my God! So yeah, natural causes. Yeah, natural causes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> lead poisoning. Yeah, <laughs> lead in the paint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no one on the on the scene confessed to knowing the doctor's identity, and no one involved ever saw the man again. <laughs> wow. Um, the crime scene was hampered by the number of people milling about the house. This, yeah. This is like the Bob Crane one, where people yep. are just coming and going. It's like it's like a cocktail party or something. Like, <laughs> like it's all studio people, and no one knows what's going on. People are just grabbing things and you know destroy. Not to say like. You can't like CSI a whole crime scene at this time. Yeah. But you can get some clues that would lead you to who killed this guy. Yeah. But everyone's there. It's like a friggin' party. The cops don't arrive until 12 hours after he's discovered. What? Yeah. Um, there's, uh, there's already dozens of studio executives and actors inside the house just kind of rummaging around stuff. Oh my God. Yeah. Actors too? <laughs> it's like, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> and the cops eventually flipped his body over to find the bullet wounds in, on the other side of his chest. So he got he got shot through. Wow. They're like, see, that's a good idea there. Let's yeah, stomach hemorrhage. Let's flip him over and see <laughs> yeah. if there's a wound. <laughs> yeah. It took him 12 hours to do that. Um, this was the worst time for this to happen to the Hollywood industry because 
Um, they're already fighting off charges of what's called moral turpitude in the wake of the Fatty Arbuckle trials, which are going on right at this time. Ooh. Um, which, um, you know, I don't want to go into too much detail because we're going to be covered at some point, but Fatty Arbuckle, famous silent movie uh, comedic actor, uh, wound up killing a woman, and um, that the trial for that is going on. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> um, but you I don't know want... where Mark stands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, the studios are like, we don't need more bad press because everyone in this country already thinks Hollywood is like some Sodom and Gomorrah, like, you know, orgy, which, yeah. you know, it kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Take it from us. Yeah. <laughs> we know. Yeah. And Fatty Arbuckle, that would have been like the. Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris Farley of his time. Yeah, Chris or Farley. Jack Black. Yeah. Jack Black Imagine. on his day. It was a total shock. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is one more component of William Desmond Taylor's personal life um, that the studio may have wanted to keep under wraps. Um, his many, many affairs with men. Ooh. You've been I, holding on to that one. I know. <laughs> well, he was known as a pro- prolific womanizer. But it was his reported dalliances with men that famous players Lasky was most concerned about. Um, like, yeah, of course, we all hit women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but we want like, a scoundrel to use one of the <laughs> terms of the day. Yeah. To hit, uh, hit on women and have sex with men. I know. And I don't mean hit on women. Yeah, only. hit I, women. Yeah, <laughs> what I mean is to bother women still. Yeah. It's yeah. like, at least leave the women alone. Yeah, leave some of them for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, many who knew him characterized him as a prolific bisexual lethargio. <laughs> uh, gossip about gay orgies and opium dens still persists. So he was a multi-hyphenate. Yeah. yeah. He's got his... Like he did in New York, he's got his hands in a lot of pots here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. And those must have been some orgies. Yeah. Initially, the LAPD was reportedly investigating his murder as a possible crime of passion by a male lover. Mm. Um, so some of the actors that were there, are they suspects? Because uh, why were they there? Uh, they were just, they were called by the studio. I don't, I don't know. No one knows. No one like, knows. Yeah. Really? They were called to the crime scene, not to the movie set. I, I, we need you in the crime scene right now. I don't know exactly how they would be brought there, but it was like such a... I think there's so many people that were uh, attached to this guy, and there was a movie that he was directing at the time mm. going on, so maybe they're like, hey, let's go check out... Since we're not working today, let's go check out this crime scene of the guy who's directing us. Yeah. I don't know. Because yeah. it was in the bungalow. Um. Yeah, it was it was in the bungalow in what is now a very bad neighborhood. Yeah. But at that time, it was like beautiful, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the first time, the public is paying attention to stories of what happens behind the scenes in Hollywood. Um, which, like I was saying, that now they're picturing it's like a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Like people are getting murdered. There's you know crazy coke fueled sex orgies and stuff, and <laughs> opium dens. And people are starting to really like. It's a very Christian nation at this time, mm. you know, and people are like really, you know, con- concerned about what's going on there. Is this also the birth of the tabloid? Yeah, like hush hush. Yeah, like writers like um, Kenneth Anger, uh, Hollywood Anger, Bab- Anger uh, Babylon, uh, Hollywood Babylon. Um, so yeah, this is like the beginning days of like what became like Star Magazine and People, ma- or whatever those kind of rags are that just talk shit about celebrities. Bat Boy. <laughs> yeah, that boy <laughs> has alien baby, whatever. Yeah. Um, so after the killing, a number of suspects soon emerged. Um, one suspect was actress Mabel Norman. She was a comedic a- actress who starred in Charlie Chaplin films. She kind of helped make Charlie Chaplin this actress. She kind of helped him, like, you know, pick and choose some of these characters. And um, I think... Does she get the credit for it? Of course not. He never thought of her. He was also, you know, kind of a pedophile himself. So let's not say he was like a good guy. I didn't say he was a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. Um, She's like, trim the mustache a little more. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah, she was like giving him ideas like that and stuff. That kind of, I think the the Gimp, or what was his character? Uh, yeah, the, uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. 
it, it's the not, not the gimp. Not the gimp. Yeah, that's totally. <laughs> different. But it's in the route. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Can you Google out. this quick? Yeah. It's the. It's not scoundrel. No, but it's like he's like Charlie yeah. Chaplin was the. Uh, the little tramp. The there tramp. You go. Yeah. So the tramp first appeared in one of Mabel's movies. So she kind of kind of wow. helped put him on, as you say. She's like the uh, she's like the fifty cent to your to someone else's like Lloyd Banks or fifty cent to Eminem or something like that. Right. Okay. Exactly. That's like a better that. one. Yeah. Um, she is being credited as the first film star to receive a pie thrown in the face. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, big thing right there for her. Um, she had a terrible coke problem, uh, which may have factored in her psychological state around the time William was murdered. Um. They were very close, Taylor and uh, Mary Norman here. Some speculate a romantic link. Um, but he would also oh, he's did enjoy both sexes. It seemed like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He literally did, not just like I thought. Maybe the curious. women were a front. Like for beards? No, I yeah. th- I think he uh, like dipping his toe in both uh, oceans. Not just his toe. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> his junk. <laughs> um, <laughs> she was the last known person to see him alive. Wow. All right, she did it then. Uh, yeah. Allegedly, he had. No, uh, I don't know. He tried to cure her coke addiction by giving federal prosecutors the names of her drug suppliers. So William was a snitch. It seems like that's not a great way to deal with drug addiction, but I applaud the effort. Yeah, I think you have to look inward, kind yeah. of, and not just look at the suppliers. Maybe um, send her to rehab. But too? Th- this could have led to his demise. Some people said, like, if he's calling out these coke dealers and stuff oh. in Hollywood. Maybe that's going to come back to him at some point. And a she's, cartel kind of situation? Yeah, I don't know if the cartels are involved just yet, but I, it's not Medellin. I, th- <laughs> I think it's like, you know, it's like Irish mobsters or something like that, or, mm. you know, the Italian, or who knows, like Mickey Cohen or something. Um, yeah, so, yeah, some people think that the, the movie studio put that rumor out there just to, like, first to make them seem better, look better. I don't know. To frame her. To frame her, yeah. Or these drug dealers that were following her around. That's awful. So she doesn't even get credit for helping Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. And then they blame her for his murder. Yes. (laughs) No (laughs) way. No way. That's so implausible. You don't believe that one? Not really. There's a couple more. There's a couple more. Okay, let's hear them. So hang in there. Uh, Another suspect was 27-year-old Edward Sands. He was a shady character who had been employed by Taylor as his assistant. Sands was a deserter from the U.S. military and had a string of convictions for forgery and embezzlement. Nice guy. Yeah, Mm. class act here. I'm imagining everybody like in a clue type setup right now. Yeah. As you introduce each suspect. Yeah. Like with the (laughs) candlestick in the library. (laughs) Months before the murder, um, Taylor returned home from a vacation to find Sands had stolen his car along with cash and jewelry. So, like, some guy works with you. He just steals all your shit. Like, yeah. yeah. That's a fireable offense, I think. Uh, it's not Sa- good. He was never heard from again after Taylor's death. Wow. Okay, so that's a little guilty. He just left. Seeming. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he he was allegedly working uh, in Northern California, and he just quit that job and was never seen again. His whereabouts are unknown to this day. Wow. So no one ever heard from this guy ever again. It seemed like he had a lot of enemies, though. Yeah, doing a lot of bad things. Uh this oh uh, who J- uh, Edward Taylor? Yeah, Edward yeah. Sands. Edward Sands. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Potential suspect number three, Henry Peavy. Ooh, Peavy. Yeah, um, he worked as the director's butler and driver, and was the person who actually found him uh, the morning on in February February of nineteen twenty two. So that that was him that found him at like eight in the morning. His uh, valet, you know. Whatever butler, or driver, whatever you want to call it. And was he showing a shadow? Um, what do you mean? Groundhog Day. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> February second. <2nd>. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Thought it was a fat joke. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like yeah, he's never seen his feet or something. <laughs> oh, was he fat? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, Fatty Arbuckle was, saying, was, was fat. He? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you only have one fat That's guy he... scandal at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all we can tolerate here. Um. Taylor had hired PV after Sands, after um, Edward Sands was a piece of crap. Um, but just like Sands, PV was uh, also a dubious character. Yeah, after the sure. murder, he was questioned many times by the police, and at one point he was taken to the cemetery, Hollywood Forever Cemetery, 
uh, where Taylor was interred to scare the confession out of him, but it did not work. Wow. Listen to this. They had a cop dress with a white sheet over his head to play the ghost of William Desmond Taylor. What? The that LAPD. Cannot be real. I, I'm sorry. Dead serious. <laughs> Official police business. Yeah. Wow. They, they had one of the cops put on a uh, a sheet to look like, like Casper, like a real ghost. <laughs> it, yeah, <laughs> they wanted to be authentic. <laughs> um, uh, PV was a, they assumed because he was an un- uneducated black man. Oh, that geez. they that they could kind of fool him like this, Jeez. like the racist LAPD up to their old tricks here. <laughs> yeah, back at it again. God. Good thing um, that that changed, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they got much better after 1922. Yeah, um, but the cop who did the voice was just like he sounded like a goon from Chicago <laughs> and not a Irish British guy. He's so like, hey, I'm a ghost over here. Hey, <laughs> I'm William Desmond Taylor, okay? <laughs> it's like a David maybe, Mamet yeah, play. Yeah. Hey, get your fucking ass over here. Yeah. I'm a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a ghost over here. Oh. oh. Yeah, people change their voices when they die, okay? <laughs> My own. And then thinking is that you said butler? Um yeah, he was like the valet butler driver. He like did all the all that stuff for William. So he was suddenly supposed to go, okay, I I did it. Yeah, because there's a ghost chasing me. Well, it just sh- shows you how many um, of these forced confessions the LAPD got out of uh, you know African Americans or Latinos at this time. That's a bonkers way to do it, though. That is a little thinking outside the box. It has to be up there with That's one outside, of the weirdest. Thinking outside the box. Yeah, right the there, attempt yeah. and the logic of the attempt is just so insulting. Like it is. They, I doubt it ever worked. It might have. Cause it could have. Yeah. Yeah. Geez. If you got someone that's scared enough and you know scared of ghosts or mentally handicapped, probably. Probably. Yeah. Suspect number four we have here, nineteen-year-old actress Mary Miles Minter. Say that three times straight. MMM. Um, yeah, MMM. Everyone had a middle name. In those I know, days. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you think they wouldn't because the guild is like not even real yet. So like, why do you have to <laughs> add your middle name? But and I then they it. changed it to middle initial. Yeah, exactly. In the eighties with Michael J. Fox. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. Um. So Mary appeared in a number of Taylor's films and became romantically linked with him, which he denied, uh, probably because she was seventeen when they met. Making them thirty years apart. Hey, seventeen, three years older than uh, Priscilla. So. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting because guys in later generations didn't give a shit. About yeah, <laughs> seventeen. That would have been like middle age to them. Yeah, exactly. That seemed like not in a good way, but it seemed like more legitimate around this time. Yeah, or more less scandalous. Yeah, maybe it wasn't. I don't know because I thought like. If these Bible thumpers are going to come after Hollywood for, like, age gaps like that, like, you can get married around this time to, like, a 12-year-old if yeah. you're like in, in, in Alabama or something. Oh, God. Does that sound bad? <laughs> we just lost the South. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> around this time, meaning late 1800s. Uh, of course. Okay. Uh, early 1900s. Um, so this, in my mind, seems like the most probable uh, scenario that happened here. And this is suspect number five? Number four. Four. Yeah. Um, there was some talk that the young actress was pathologically obsessed with William. Um, much older, obviously. Um, her mom was in the picture. Her mom was like some crazy showbiz mom. Like it would put, she would put any other showbiz mom to like, like she Brittany makes Mur- Brittany Murphy's mom look yeah. normal. Yeah, wow. like totally normal. She's insane. She's not mad that William Taylor is, uh, is older. She's mad that he's taking, um, you know, the focus off of her as being the controlling person in her daughter's life. Uh. Like, because she wants to be able to tell her exactly what to do. Whereas, you know, Mary Miles Minter, maybe she had never had a father figure in her life or something. She really attaches herself to William Taylor. William and Devin was Taylor. he playing the part? I think so. But I think at some point he got kind of spooked because he was like, well, you know, she, this is too intense. It's like dangerous liaisons or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, th- there was rumors that, you know, she um, had threatened to kill herself if uh, he didn't keep going out with her or something. Like, she put a gun to her head. Um, her I believe that. She's boiling a rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm not going to be ignored, William. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, there were rumors circulating that uh, Charlotte Shelby, her uh, mentor's mom, this is the crazy, you know, a stage mother. Um, she had a 38 caliber pistol gun um, that she had. And then he was shot with a 38 caliber. Ooh. Oh, and, well, there you go. And the gun after this, uh, Charlotte didn't know where it went. She told the cops it was missing. So it was stolen. Wow. Yeah. That's what they call literally the smoking gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like pretty dead on. It seems like that that's the main suspect right there. But no one saw her. There were no witnesses. No witnesses. Around the area. No. Um, when Mary saw William's body in the morgue, she was so distraught that she offered to give her own blood to bring him back to life, which is crazy because <laughs> she doesn't even know how... That's you know, how blood works. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how life works and death. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Naive, a little yeah. bit. Some say she was acting to hide the fact that she had killed him. Mm. But she was like acting out like, I'm so sad he's dead. Overdoing it. Overdoing it, maybe. Here, take my brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You need a leg? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if they called her out on it? Yeah, actually, we could use that. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't try to, to, to do it anymore. Put your yeah. brain and blood <laughs> in his body. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, her, mo- her mom was clearly crazy. Um, she was, like, very parasitic, they said. And they said she had even forced her daughter at 15 years old to get an abortion when she became pregnant by another actor. Oh so, God. like... She had been through the entire the ringer of Hollywood, <laughs> this girl, Mary Minter. Oof. Um, but there yeah. was also talk that Charlotte, the mom, may have also had something of her own for Taylor. Like, she wanted to get after this guy, too. Yeah. And how old a lady is she, the mom? Good question. I think she's, like, uh, she's like more towards Taylor's age, I okay. think. Yeah, more, age ap- more age appropriate. Yeah. yeah. So he's not interested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The sister was also an actress, and she she said her mom did it. She said point blank, my mom did it. Okay, so that sister was helpful. Yeah. She said my mom did it. She told the LAPD, but um, Charlotte had an alibi, which I'll bring up in a little bit. Margaret so, Shelby is the older sister. Older of, Margaret Shelby, yeah. Yeah. So. Why do they all have different last names? <laughs> the mom said she was playing cards with Carl Stockdale, and that was her alibi, and okay. she got away with it because of that. And who's Carl Stockdale? Some no-name, kind of like third-rate actor, who was good enough for an alibi, but not good enough to be in a good movie or something. <laughs> we were playing cards, my dog. Yeah, Pinochle or something. <laughs> we were playing Pinochle the night he was yeah. <laughs> murdered. I couldn't have done it. Um, here's the evidence. Uh, this is the breakdown of all... every like This is like the case that the LAPD had here. All right, let's go. 7.45 p.m. on... Fe- February 1st, 1922, Mabel Normand left William Desmond Taylor's bungalow with a book she had borrowed from him. She said he was in good spirits at around 8 p.m. Some 10 to 15 minutes later, Faith Cole McLean, Taylor's next door neighbor, told police that she and her husband heard a loud noise like a car backfiring Mm. at 8 p.m. That's what uh, uh, Marvin Gaye's family said. Yeah. About the gunshot. No one knows, like, oh, that was a gunshot. You know, it's, yeah. it's always like <laughs> firecrackers or uh, car backfiring. Um, not long after the neighbor reported seeing someone come out of Taylor's front door, then go back in, only to reemerge a few moments later, smiling. Uh, the neighbor said, uh, noted two disturbing details. One was that the burglar almost looked like a cartoonish caricature of a burglar, like someone dressing up in costume. Yeah. Uh, the second detail. The Hamburglar walks yeah. up. <laughs> and Ronald McDonald. Yeah. <laughs> Grimace is there for some reason. Um, the second detail was that the supposed burglar's build, uh, McLean said that it may have been a woman disguising herself as a man. Mm. Small boot prints found at the scene corroborated her description. Wow. So it seems like a woman trying to pretend like, one, she's a burglar, two, she's a man. I'm a burglar, see? Hey, you know, I'm bad news, huh? <laughs> and that is plausible that she would go to those lengths. Yeah. To because that's really We're talking about Charlotte uh Shelby now. The, yeah, the, the mom. Yeah. The mom. Because that would be what you would assume. Yeah. That it's a man, that there's some kind of robbery. So yeah. if you look the part Most murders and robberies are committed by men. Yeah. 
Not to go full Jordan Peterson here. <laughs> that's, what, that's what men are doing. <laughs> <laughs> now clean your room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to get off Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I like Joe Rogan. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Um, the studio, famous players, Lasky, still going by that name for some reason, um, uh, they stole uh, possible evidence before the arrival of the police, like we talked about. Yeah. Um, so the police had problems collecting physical evidence. Um, the ho- studio stole evidence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but that's what that they is, do. They're fixing. I know, but That's what Ray they Donovan would do. Always yeah. get away with it. Because they run the town. They got more money than the police. Remember when Warner Brothers shut down the initial Twilight Zone investigation? Yeah. Yeah. Hiding files. They run, the, they, they run the town. The I studios. Know, you know. Especially in the 80s, too. I don't yeah. know about now. I'm rooting for the little guy. Yeah, me too. L- little guy like this big director we're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the 15-year-old girlfriend that he was with. Yeah. Hold on. The, the, the general little guy. Oh, okay. Are you, like the, the commercial, the general? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's with Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the general furniture. What, is it? what are they selling? The oh, general? yeah. It had Car that. insurance. Yeah, he's a little guy. Yeah. Yeah, they call it like 1-800-GENERAL. General, no. yeah. <laughs> That's exactly that commercial is yeah. what I'm talking about. So what I was trying, the point I was trying to make is the fact that with all the things that were taken, the police couldn't tell if it was a robbery because so much shit was taken in the first place. Mm. But they could still, for the most part, believe that it was not a legitimate robbery, um, based on what was going on in the apartment. I guess um, the time of his death was determined to be 7:50 p.m. Reports and other items found at the scene uh, feel almost too salacious to be real. Women's lingerie, tagged with names and dates. Pornographic images of female film stars, Norman included. Love letters from Mabel and Mary Miles Minter. Uh, a 19-year-old actress um, whom Taylor mentored, so, which I talked about yeah. before. Um, as well as uh, Mary Minter's nightgown. Uh-oh. Uh, it, it almost seemed like they were, like, set dressing. Like, they were, they were making it... They were putting together all these theories there. there. Yeah. Whoever was in charge of doing this. I was expecting more salacious than that. Yeah. For the time, that's pretty salacious. They found a nightgown. Yeah. I think they're naked tr- pictures of famous actresses, yeah, that though. That's is. crazy. Yeah. 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 I expected like a like a dildo with a knife on the other side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 like bestiality. Porn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a dead pig or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um after his death, the case was eventually slowed down and then completely stopped. Wow. Um, by who? The LAPD. They just guy they, dressed as a ghost. They ran out of gas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Detective Ghost. Yeah. Wait a second. Sorry, I took off my disguise. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg. What? <laughs> <laughs> he takes off that disguise. <laughs> Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Um, the evidence in related case files have also disappeared. Everything's disappeared. Yeah. Um, like much of his movie, like 50% of his movies have disappeared also. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, the evidence and all the files are all gone. Um, one last uh, note comes from 40 years after his murder. Um, so the 1960s. Yeah. This woman named Margaret Gibson. Mar- Margaret Gibson had worked with Taylor early in his acting career. Um, not much is known about their relationship afterwards, but uh, in 1917, her very public arrest for vagrancy and opium dealing forced her to change her name to Patricia Palmer. Opium dealing. Um, so she was arrested a lot. Uh, she had a lot of issues and stuff throughout the years. Um, one day in 1964, 42 years after William Desmond Taylor's murder, she suffered a severe heart attack, this Margaret Gibson. Sentient she was near death, she asked for a priest and confessed to neighbors that she was the one who murdered the director before succumbing to her death. What? She On her deathbed, she said she killed him. Th- there was no real reason given to why she would actually had had a real motive to kill him, but um, she all of a sudden, like on her deathbed, just um, you know, said she did it. She might have not been in her right mind. Yeah, yeah. she. it says here... Uh, 
While living in Hollywood, Gibson suffered a heart attack at her home. Sensing that she was dying, a highly distraught Gibson, a recently converted Roman Catholic, asked for a priest and confessed to neighbors that the February 1st, 1922 murder of Hollywood uh, film director William Desmond Taylor was her. Yeah. Some say she was going to be, she was like, um, she was blackmailing him or something uh, for his, like, you know, salacious, you know, life or something or. But she all of a sudden she said she did it. I, but that's such a weird thing to be on your deathbed and just you know, admit to something you didn't do. Yeah, <laughs> that really just just to fuck with people after you die. Maybe imagine <laughs> on your deathbed, just say <laughs> I really throw a I wrench killed into JFK thing. or something. Yeah. I did nine eleven. Yeah. yeah, that's a you nice never bit. Know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great bit. Commitment to the bit. The long term <laughs> bit. Yeah. If you're not in your right mind, though. Yeah, I don't know. It's all very strange. I, there's like. A lot of studio fixers like working against each other. It just seems like very shrouded in mystery. This entire thing. Yeah, she confessed to that in October of 1964. Yeah. So it's 40 some years later. Here's some possible scenarios that um, I, I found on the internet. Here, Henry Peavy, uh, Taylor's valet, uh, at the time of his death, murdered William Desmond Taylor for reasons unknown. <laughs> That's a crazy scenario. Just like very vague. Yeah, that's quite the investigation there. Yeah. Some say Edward Sands was trying to extort him or blackmail him for his like his lifestyle and get money out of him and stuff, so he killed him because he was blackmailing him, but that doesn't make it as much sense. And like we talked about earlier, even though there were less things were less spoken about then. Yeah. But they weren't as controversial. So would his lifestyle really have been a deal breaker for people? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people could get away with, like you said, marrying 12-year-olds then. But I, I think the newspaper scared people. Like, the, if, if stuff was getting out or getting around town, that's how careers were killed. And they must have seen other people lose their... Because Fatty Arbuckle wound up did losing his career after that case. So, like, I think even the mere uh, mention or, like, hint or rumor about something would get you, like, blacklisted from working a lot. That's wow. a good point. Because Fatty Arbuckle was destroyed by done. that. Yeah, he was done. Yeah. That yeah. scandal cleared him out of Hollywood. Yeah. Um, and that's the backdrop of this murder. Yeah. Like, but why were the studio fixers, like, pre- who were they protecting, like, exactly? Some say they were protecting Norman, uh, Minter, or, uh, or even Gibson. Like, they were protecting their talent. They were protecting the actors from something else he was involved in that he was going to get them ruined for. Because I think they were just scrambling crazy because the press was bad at this time. It's the worst time for this thing to happen, which was, as we said, the first biggest Hollywood murder mystery that that had happened. And what's the studio called again? Like McAllister and... It was Player, Famous Players Lasky. Famous Players Lasky. That turned into Paramount. Famous Players Lasky. They figure if it's somebody on the inside, we don't know, but if it is, we just got to clear this up i love the doctor who tried to like explain it away as a uh, a stomach hemorrhage and, yeah. like, <laughs> and he just tried to it pop in and said yeah this is the thing he just had a white coat yeah, it's bleeding in the stomach see yeah <laughs> it was i gotta such, go huh <laughs> it was such a bad hemorrhage that it burst out the back twice yeah, yeah. with her reputation irreparably irreparably damaged mary miles mentor retired from films in 1923 she spoke lovingly, even obsessively, of her love for Taylor for even decades after. Mary continued to have a strained relationship with her mother, Charlotte Shelby. For years afterward, Mary intimated that she sus- suspected her mother of Taylor's murder also. So Mary intimated, but didn't really, like, on the record, say that her mother killed William Taylor. Wow. Um, Margaret Gibson's confession is impossible to corroborate. Um, as all case files from the murder have long disappeared, as I was saying before. Yeah, sounds like William Shatner. Yeah, well, what <laughs> what happened? Yeah. We don't know. You know, yeah. sorry, we uh, we we lost those files. And the LAPD shutting down the investigation yeah. before it begins. Pretty much. Um, other miscellaneous theories: a Connecticut man wrote a letter saying he killed William because he had an affair with his wife. So a guy from Connecticut is just like, hey, why don't I just send a letter? You know, saying, uh, I killed him. A little John Mark Carr action there. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, some thought it was a old... Friend old of the show. Friend John of the show. Mark Carr. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> nobody knows yet. Yeah, we though. haven't even told anybody yet. <laughs> a little teaser for you. Um, an old Alaska prospecting rival may have been the murderer, some people think. Ooh. Wow. Uh, someone yeah, what was he up to in Alaska? I know. He went and he went back. Something maybe there was something going on up there, like he had a love affair or something nefarious. Yeah, like not it wasn't just the gold bringing him up there. Maybe no. he was drilling yeah. for oil. Maybe he found a bear. <laughs> 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 <It's> like, <Yeah. laughs> um, some guy named Oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a bear, all right. They got bears up there. Um, yeah, that's interesting too. That there's so many women involved in this intrigue, and none of his male lovers are. No, that's interesting too. Maybe one of his male lovers was one of the studio executives. Bum bum bum. Okay. Th- there's nothing I have to corroborate anything like that, but, <laughs> he but was maybe maybe Lasky. Yeah, maybe it was Lasky. Could be. It was Lasky the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they find the mask in the straw. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Not I. Not I. Or I. Um Or me. Some some other <laughs> possible murderers. Some people thought the IRA was mixed up in this. Um, as I described earlier, uh, the Ku Klux Klan, for some reason, possible suspects. They're not as organized. The IRA, though, is uh, intriguing. Maybe someone he knew during uh, the war. Um, you know, who knows? Well, the KKK, I mean, it could have been someone uh, very upset that he was employing a black man. That could have been it, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Mm. Um, Hollywood is being called America's Sodom and Gomorrah, like I was saying before, and like this definitely, you know, solidified that that yeah. it was like an, uh, a decadent era of you know debauchery in Hollywood. S and an F and yeah, a lot of S and an F and <laughs> and it's at the beginning of the Roaring Twenties. I know this is the beginning. Dude. Yeah, they're already this all... was the starter pistol. Yeah, <laughs> even before that though, it was like. It was like n- no holds barred, you know, disgusting. Like, yeah, yeah. If you saw that movie Babylon, don't see it. But it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's disturbing. What the, you know, you know, pissing on people and oh doing God. coke mm. like till you know, crazy so extent. So they buried this case. They got over Fatty Arbuckle. Yeah, and then they're like. All right, we're doing the Charleston. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello, my lady. <laughs> Hello, my darling. <laughs> Hello, my sunshine gal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's saying here that in 1934 is when they started clamping down on, you know, studios and stuff and making the industry more regulated. So. Well, they, they, they brought up the Hayes Code, which was like not only um, it was like a, a congressional, you know, uh, law in which it tried to clean up a lot of the stuff that Hollywood was doing. Yeah. Yeah, that was the reason for all movies until the 1960s yeah. having no swearing, no nudity, nothing. Yeah. They were all rated PG mm. because of the Hayes Code. Pretty much. And fascinating that before the Hayes Code, you can find movies from the 1930s that actually have nudity. Really? Yeah, like big Hollywood movies. Ooh. Yeah. And then the Hayes Code was brought in, and that's why Alfred Hitchcock, everybody... Yeah, all their they movies, had to adhere to these rules. Yeah, they're all safe. Yeah. And they would t- speak in code. Yeah. You know, to get what across it's what like they the wanted. George W. Bush era at the FCC kind of when they were like they were clamping because they were at Janet Jackson's breast. That oh, was yeah. the most ridiculous <laughs> thing yeah. of all time in, yeah. in terms of censor censorship. And, and Justin Timberlake got off like gangbusters out of that whole thing, you know. Yeah. He's the one that ripped her tit off or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and it was planned, I think. It was, yeah. yeah. They yeah. meant to do that. Yeah. They did, yeah. And when you see it again, it, she's not even showing the whole boob. No, it's ridiculous. There's like a little dot on it. Yeah. Well, yeah I'm well, not talking about the nipple. Uh, she's got the ring on it, though. There's a nipple ring on there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that changes things then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Different story now. Um, no, but it is interesting how many times... If you think about it, well, the MPAA came in like the to replace the Hayes Act, I right? Feel like. And that's where you had movies that were rated X, yeah. But then that was considered deadly because then it was thought of as porn, yeah. Because Kennedy created the the MPAA that that was his thing. Um, he put in one of his cronies or something, Jack uh, Valenti. Jack Valenti, yeah, asshole. Y- yeah, he's an <laughs> asshole. Why did he come up in my my life. I, I remember hearing about him. Maybe it was like a South Park or Michael Moore thing or something. Yeah, and movies like Midnight Cowboy got the X rating. Yeah. But 
you know, if you see it now, it's an R movie. Yeah, ridiculous. So it was considered porn. And then yeah. they, they changed it to NC-17. Yeah. And they're like, that sounds better than X. But then Showgirls get slapped with it. Yeah. And it's still, you know, persona non grata in the movie world. No, yeah. you, you know can't, what I mean? You like, can't really, like, if, especially if there's, like, financial backers. No one wants to back in, in unless it's a porn. It's either do porn or... Or, you know, do an R movie. Yeah. You, there's no reason for anything. Like, between. we're idiots. Yeah. Like, we can't handle Janet Jackson. We can't handle... Lars von Trier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what this episode is bringing out, how ridiculous it all is. You know, yeah. they're trying to hide the debauchery of Hollywood, and they just let probably a killer go free. Well, they did <laughs> let a killer go free. Pretty much, case, yeah. All because they want to protect their image. Yeah. And... It, you know, in the end, they could have been. All, you know, it all adds up to nothing. They could have protected more people at the studio there. Who knows what the hell was really going on behind the scenes here? Uh, but yeah, maybe the studio did step in just to like, even if the, one of their executives weren't involved or something, just to like try to like change the narrative to make them look okay. Um, exactly what happened. Yeah, uh, the funeral took place in St. Paul's Cathedral in L.A. before he was interred in Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Um, his last film, The Top of New York, was released four months after his death. Top of New York. Top of New York, yeah. The bottom of uh, Hollywood. <laughs> the bottom <laughs> of Burbank, I guess. <laughs> that's where the Hollywood Forever Cemetery is. No, that's in Hollywood. Yeah, right? it's in Hollywood, yeah. That's right. Bottom of Ross Dress for Less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he has not been forgotten. Um, in his native country of Ireland, uh, there is a uh, William Taylor Desmond Soci Film Society um, that annually has a festival in his honor. Oh. Yeah. So. I wonder if we can stream one of his movies on Twitch sometime. Yeah, I hope so. I tried to find a couple, but there's no there's slim pickings out there for him. <laughs> he didn't have like a Star Wars. No, movie. nothing like that. It was all like <laughs> it was all very cheap silent movies that he did. But you know, they were successful. People went to go see him, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Like Elvis's movies, just churning them out. Yeah. He he was well liked, you know, like I think uh film crew and like, you know, other stars and stuff really liked the guy. They said he was just great to work with and yeah. I guess someone one night didn't like him. <laughs> yeah. And in other scenes he was very well liked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I think, you know, there's really not any coincidences when it comes to true crime or anything. So the fact that the girl Mary Minter, her mom had a gun, matches the bullet that is yeah. inside him. The gun goes missing. She either did it or was a part of it, um, you would have to think. And a lot of this stuff with the evidence stuff is secondhand because there's no confirmation of what was the evidence because they, they lost it all. Yeah. They conveniently lost everything on it. Yeah. It's crazy. And think about the power of a child blaming their parent. That doesn't come lightly, that no. confession. That must have been a screwed up family. Yeah. But also... I believe the child in that case, the daughter, yeah. because of all the other evidence plus that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird that deathbed confession is 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 the one thing that throws like a wrench into it, but she could have been in cahoots with the the mother somehow. Wow. Could have been. Yeah, yeah it could have been a collaborative a family affair. <laughs> yeah, or she was just out of her goddamn mind. I think the they I life. think they all were. I think, yeah. you know, <laughs> I think I, we can attest to some of the people that come to Hollywood are insane. And, yeah. you know, I don't think that's oh, changed really? over the last hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yeah. noticed. Just go out on the 405, you know. Yeah. Throw a rock. Throw yeah. some, please throw a rock at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Final yeah. thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, yeah. Uh, rest in peace, Mr. William T Desmond Taylor. Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace uh, to. WDT. Yeah, the LAPD's uh, investigative tactics as well mm -hmm. of dressing up as a ghost to try to get a confession out of somebody. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Good cop, bad ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Cow's hanging out of that one. Coming a to bit. a theater near you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the wilder details I've ever heard yeah. in a true yeah. crime case. Yeah. <laughs> dressing up as a ghost to get someone to confess. But you know that worked before for him, too. Why would they? That's not it the first time they tried. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And next time you see Moulin Rouge or Forrest Gump at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, <laughs> you can pay your respects to him. Yeah. <laughs> he's right over there. We should uh, check him out one day. So, William Desmond Taylor to see where he's buried. Yeah. Let's do it. Also, Br Anton bring Yelchin. Our, bring our sheets over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anton Yelchin, too. Is buried there. Yeah. 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 
among others. Lots of people buried yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll go watch a movie on his grave. That's yeah, people stop do, right? on his grave. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. <laughs> While we're watching uh, the Minions movie or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of housekeeping before we get out of here. We uh, actually, I don't even know if you two know this, but we hit 101 on the charts in France. Get out of here. Yes. Wow. You do not say. True crime podcast. You have a baguette and you, listen to uh, us. You better pronounce the towns correctly where yeah. uh, people were stationed. I know. Yeah. We, we don't know how to pronounce Burges. Burges. Or, or Burges. I don't know. Sure. But uh, We loved your Anthony Bourdain episode. Yes. France. We got two Fs in this episode. France and Finland. We, we hit the top uh, 101 for France. And then it was like inside... On the closer to 200, but we, we broke the top 200 in Finland as well. So, so. We're number one. Oh, yes. So we <laughs> finish. Hey! There. Yes. Helsinki. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to France and Finland. Uh, Merci. Welcome. Shout out. Yes. Uh, we got some fan mail here. We got some reviews that we're going to share and pass on to please, you guys. Please, please do. Uh, this is from Moloko Jib. Uh, it's from our iTunes um, reviews, and it's titled, Actually One of My Favorite Podcasts, uh, which, actually, do we need actually? Yeah. Actually, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's like one a, of my favorites. It's like a response to someone else. Actually, I like them. Yes. Yeah. But they wrote, very nice. This show is killer. I find myself laughing out loud at least two or three times every episode I watch, which probably should be more. Uh, Mark, Kyle, and Alejandro all play off each other perfectly, making this one of the best things for me to put on to pass the time while at work. As comedians, they go against the typical true crime show host persona and make it fun and actually interesting. They cover it all, too, from A-list people to no names. I couldn't recommend this show more. Exclamation point. Thank you, sir or ma'am. Yes. Actually, that was a pretty good review. Oh, hey. Right back at you. Yes. Um, yeah, and on our Instagram, Linda Emily G wrote, I love the Elvis two-parter. You guys always come through with great content. So we love you, Linda. Thank you, Thank Linda. You. Thank you. Shout out, Linda. Yeah. So we are, uh, we're taking over Europe again. Again. And, uh, yeah. And China. And China, yeah. Yeah, Hong Kong. Hong Kong, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> let's not start an international incident. Here. Yeah, we already shot down the balloon. Let's yeah. not uh, get <laughs> ourselves shot. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to become the balloon. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, uh, yeah, I guess until next time, uh, find us on TikTok, YouTube, all the good things. We're about to hit 3,000 subscribers on YouTube, so thank you, everybody. Please help us out with that. We already hit over 6,000 now on TikTok, so we are climbing and growing, and we love you all. Absolutely. And please leave a review anywhere you can. Yes. We yeah. appreciate it and we will read it. Yes. Yeah. Leave it on your bathroom walls, wherever you want to. That's you know, right. We'll, we'll find but it, take find a it there. picture of it and send it <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. Please do. Any requests, notes, concerns, death threats, send to death and entertainment at gmail.com. Yes, please. And until next week, don't go dying on us. Bye bye. You have just heard a true Hollywood murder mystery. I have never seen anything like this before. The movies, Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures nightmares. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon.